In this topic, we want to introduce you to a concept called short selling. In a young market like India, most investors think in terms of buying securities and holding them while they appreciate, and later booking profits or letting that profit ride, usually the former. The underlying assumption in that decision is that as companies grow, prosper, increase market share and profits, there will be a substantial increase in their underlying stock prices. Buy low and sell high is the mantra that we are taught to follow. In investment parlance, buying a stock is often known as taking a long position in it or going long. But what if the share price of a company has already appreciated in value far more than it deserves? What if the economy turns and the fortunes of said company were likely to wane? In our valuation topics on the Pi site, we will discuss this more in detail, how you might go about judging what is cheap and undervalued, as well as what is expensive and overvalued. For the moment, however, instead of buying low and selling high, think about a reverse scenario, where you could sell high and buy back low later and turn a profit from a transaction in that manner. This is what is known as short selling, and I want to outline for you a process that allows you to engage in such a transaction. The Indian setting first, as always. In India, strategies that profit from downside price movements typically take place in what is known as the FNO segment, or the Futures and Options segment. There are only about 250 securities in which these reverse bets are permitted. But surely, there could be any number of stocks not in the FNO segment on which you might want to place that reverse bet. In India, efforts have taken place at various times to create such an environment, but they have not been very successful thus far. This short selling activity and environment, however, is very common in many other equity market locations. So what I want to do for you is to describe this process and associate it with risk management practices that it might foster. So how does this short selling work? Suppose a stock is trading now at 150 rupees a share, but your analysis reveals it to be expensive and that it should correct to about 130 rupees. What short selling permits you to do is to borrow the shares, usually through your broker, and then to sell them at the current market price of 150. You sit back and wait for the price to drop, just like you were waiting for prices to rise on other shares you might have once purchased. So, if your analysis is correct and the shares do drop to 130, you simply buy the shares back at 130 in a second transaction return the original shares to the one who lent them to you, collect the 150 and turn a tidy profit. This second transaction of buying the shares back is known as covering the short sale. The maximum you could possibly make from such a short sale is if the stock price were to drop down to zero, right? Sounds simple. Borrow, sell high and buy back low. The graph below shows you how the long and the short positions are mirror images. The long position started at 150 and profits above it and loses below it. The short position also started at 150 but profits when the stock price falls and loses if the stock price rises. So you have to think what could go wrong with a transaction like this? The price might keep increasing after you've sold short and you would have a paper loss to handle. The lender of the shares might want them back. They're after all now worth much more than the price at which he or she lent them to you. Technically, the stock price could keep increasing in value and your prices and your losses keep multiplying. Compare that with the typical long position where the most you could lose is what you initially paid for it. Another complication with short selling might ensue when a dividend gets paid. The owner of record as far as the company paying the dividend is concerned is the original person who lent the shares to you. But the person to whom you short sold the shares is also entitled to the dividend, right? You would have to, as a short seller, you would have to pay the dividend to him in order to keep the short sale position alive. In fact, it is this business of organizing the borrowing and the lending and the dividends that has been the bottleneck, bottleneck in India for active short selling activity to take place or even to be permitted. I could go on but I hope you've got a good sense for short selling and for the games that people play. Come back for more.